Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. We have enough screwballs, Home Depot founder rips our immigration policy, is he right? Yet another horror connected to radical Islam occurred when an Uber driver from Uzbekistan rented a Home Depot service truck in New Jersey and used it to kill eight people in New York City and injure 15 others. In the wake of this senseless tragedy, the founder of Home Depot spoke out against America's lax, misguided immigration policy that allowed hateful killer Saiflo Saipov to come to America and stay here. Commented Ken Longoni. Nothing proves to me more than this experience that we need to know who's here with us. How the hell can we just say, come on in and we don't care how you got in here and we don't care where you're from or what you did or what your background was. He added, I'm not arguing pro or against immigration. My grandparents came here as immigrants. I think virtually everybody's ancestors came here as immigrants. We're a country of immigrants, but... They all came legitimately and we all knew where they came from and what they wanted to do. Attacking America's current immigration policy, Ken went on, this underscores the need for us to be diligent and have a program and have an effort where people have to let us know who they are and that they came in here legitimately. Why have borders, otherwise? I don't understand this. He elaborated, look. There's nuts in the world, Ken Longoni admitted. You know? We have mass murders, remember Ted Kaczynski, the guy that was the Unabomber, we have enough screwballs in America without importing them. Do you agree with Longoni? <laughs> Professor urges students to act violently to end white democracy and capitalism. Diablo Valley College professor Albert Bontz was caught on video giving an over-the-top speech urging his students to break laws and violently smash the system. Abolition means we must destroy it, not reform it. No voting is going to help. No writing your congressperson. We need to smash white supremacy, said the professor. That's the beauty of the law, if you write it, you can convince all of us to follow it. Just like all of us do today. When you shouldn't. Many of the laws existing, we should be violating those laws. We are taught to get up and to pledge allegiance to the flag every single day, said the professor. The flag is not really representative of everybody who is standing up in that room. Maybe that's the way it should be taught. All those who this flag represents stand up, and maybe 50% of this room, you remain seated down because this is not for you, he said. He went on to say that the Constitution should be called a white man's Constitution, and that Karl Marx was one of the most profound thinkers in the history of Western philosophy. So it is fitting that a white supremacist of old with a white supremacist of today exists and sit, they are smiling in the White House, said the professor, referencing President Trump. Should this professor be investigated? Jesse Jackson just ordered protesting NFL players to escalate, it's sick. Self-proclaimed civil rights leader will do anything to keep himself in the spotlight, even if it means splitting our fractious country in half along racial and cultural lines. In a recent display of Jackson's contempt for our country and its values, he publicly urged NFL players to escalate their protesting. Stated Jackson recently, according to the Houston Chronicle, the players should escalate their nonviolent protests. Donald Trump called them sons of bitches. Kaepernick is not degrading the flag. He went on about disgraced, unemployed former San Francisco 49ers quarterback Kaepernick, saying, he's kneeling to pray, which is in our best tradition. If we had not knelt and prayed nonviolently, where would be today as a society? Jackson was not done mouthing off. He continued, Blacks and whites couldn't have played together and stayed together and celebrated together. If not for the civil rights movement, you couldn't have had that team in Houston. We were successful in our protests and the walls came down. 
Houston Texans owner Bob McNair probably used a poor choice of words in commenting recently about protesting players, we can't have the inmates running the prison. Jackson immediately seized on this mistake and sought to get all the mileage out of it that he could, claiming that it showed a plantation mentality. Said Jesse, the players are objectified in some sense. Mr. McNair is a product of the South. They act like he's a victim or misunderstood, but those players have made him a wealthy man. Are you disgusted by how Jesse Jackson is harming our country? DNC bans cisgender straight white males from applying to job. The DNC has had a ton of corruption throughout the election. They helped trick the primaries for Hillary Clinton against Bernie Sanders and they provided her with debate questions beforehand. Now it looks like they are going for hiring discrimination as well. In an email to DNC members they discussed jobs opening up and said that the message shouldn't be sent to cisgender straight white males. The email described how the DNC was trying to rebuild with new jobs. However, the final sentences are what is newsworthy. Please let me know if you have any questions or concerns and feel free to forward on to your contacts. I personally would prefer that you not forward to cisgender straight white males, since they're already in the majority, said the email. The Daily Wire obtained the full email from an anonymous DNC insider who went on to insult the DNC. Clearly the DNC is doubling down on a failed strategy that has alienated staffers and voters alike. We want to be judged based on the quality of our work, not on identity politics. How can we trust the leadership of the DNC if they don't even trust us?" said the source. Do you think it is wrong that Democrats are trying to exclude white men? Breaking Famous Singer Just Told Whites to Move to the Back of the Audience During the Jim Crow era, African Americans were discriminated against and told to move to the back of the bus. Thankfully, the time when such discrimination against blacks was acceptable is over. However, it clearly appears that we have now been entering a time of reverse discrimination. On October 19, a popular Canadian singer named Lito Pimenta, who is of Colombian heritage, generated headlines when during a concert she told all white members to move to the back of the audience and non-white members to move to the front. This racial segregation has apparently become customary at her shows. One white woman who had volunteered to photograph the concert, however, refused to move to the back of the concert hall, setting off a confrontation with Paminda. After ordering the white volunteer ten times to move to the back, Paminda said, you're cutting into my set time, and you're disrespecting these women, and I don't have time for this." The concert venue ended the confrontation by kicking the volunteer out of the concert. Sickeningly, the event promoter took the singer's side and apologized to her, saying, Toledo Peminda, we are sorry that one of our volunteers interrupted your art, your show, and your audience by being aggressive and racist. We have so much respect for the art and music you create and the space you make for women, people of color, transgender, and non-binary people. Are you appalled by this reverse racism? Breaking Corey Feldman is exposing six powerful Hollywood pedophiles. Hollywood liberals love to point fingers at Republican lawmakers and try to accuse them of all manner of offenses. Unfortunately for these California leftists, they just got exposed in a big way about how so many members of their community have been sexually assaulting women and children for decades. Former teen star Corey Feldman went on the Today Show and told Hot Matt Lauer how he plans on finally exposing six powerful Hollywood pedophiles. He is also raising $10 million from victims and others to produce a film detailing just how pervasive pedophiles are in the entertainment industry. Said Corey to Matt about the pedophiles, there are thousands of people out there, Matt, who have this information. Any one of those child actors that went to the teenage soda pop clubs with me when I was a kid, know who those people are and the people who ran it. 
Anybody can go back through history and look at the teen magazines and say what was the name of that venue they were promoting and who ran that venue on who endorsed it. Lauer asked him, You said you have death threats because you have this information. After Corey replied in the affirmative, Lauer continued, and have threatened to expose it. Another reason I think to go to police. That's a crime to threaten someone's life. Corey answered, I've gone to the police with that, as well. Then Lauer inquired, and what would be wrong about going to the police now again? Feldman replied, there's a statute of limitations, Matt, in the state of California which protects people. It's not that way in New York. It's that way only where the movie industry is, conveniently enough in California. That's the seriousness of this. You cannot. Because if I were to go to the police, I would be he one who's getting sued. Henceforth, I need a team of lawyers and I need a team of security to be around me at all times, to keep me safe so I can get this message done. Lauer commented, really, really quickly. Corey continued, I'm not playing around. It's serious stuff. I vow I will release every name that I have any knowledge of, period. And nobody's going to stop me this time, as long as people support this. Did you support what Corey Feldman is doing?